Nissan is one of the world's biggest manufacturers of EVs. It pioneered the mainstream electric car with the Nissan Leaf more than a decade ago, but as it felt like Nissan has perhaps become complacent and been leapfrogged by some of the new arrivals in the last few years, well, maybe yes, but not anymore. This is the Nissan Aria, or to be more precise, it is a Nissan Aria prototype, which we've been given early access to in order to have a little look around and pot around the test track here. It is, as you can see, a very sleek coupe crossover. Now, it is 4.6 metres long, which for some context means that it's a little bit bigger than Nissan's very popular Qashqai, but a little bit shorter than the Ford Mustang Mach-E that will be one of its chief rivals. Now, before we do get on and have a look inside the car and find out what it's like to drive, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel, and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos. The Aria is offered with two batteries, a 63 kilowatt hour or an 87 kilowatt hour. The smaller battery will deliver a WLTP range of up to 223 miles, and is front-wheel drive only, while the bigger one will do up to 310 miles, or a bit less than that if you go for one of the more powerful four-wheel drive variants, which include an E-Force performance version that will do 62 miles per hour in just over five seconds. The Aria is on sale now, with delivery starting in summer 2022 for the front-wheel drive models and four-wheel drive versions arriving a bit later. Prices run from just under £42,000 up to nearly £60,000 for the Aria performance model. It looks really cool as well, I think, the Nissan Aria. There's something very concept car-like about it, with this very smooth surfacing everywhere. I like the uh, shield here. The pattern on this is inspired by a Japanese wood, apparently, and you see that echoed throughout the rest of the car as well. I just think it looks great. I like the slim headlights too. There's loads of good, uh, good details on this car, and that concept car feel does kind of echo inside as well. It's definitely a theme with most modern cars that you have quite a minimalist interior and I think Nissan has pretty much nailed it in here. I like this very simple two horizontal structures across the dash with the vents going across there. Simple but really effective, I think it looks good. There are some nice touches, the materials are lovely, I love this wood finish, touch sensitive buttons, um, haptic buttons for your climate control here, drive modes and things down here, it all looks really smart. I like the fact that this moves forward so you can use it as a knee rest if you want. It's quite a ni nice touch. It all just feels really nice. I really like this uh, suede finish as well. It's very cool. You can even get it in blue, which I particularly like. The idea of a blue suede interior really does appeal to me. Uh, very smart two-spoke steering wheel. I just think all of it looks smart, modern, and actually quite functional, which is kind of the point, isn't it? You do get, of course, um, touchscreen as standard with all of your functions in there that you would expect, and you can also connect it to your Alexa at home and tell the car to turn your heating on at home and all of that sort of stuff if you wish. It is probably not the best graphics I've ever seen on a touchscreen, it has to be said, but it does seem to respond quite quickly. And like I said, the functionality is there, so I think it's going to do everything that you want it to. Practicality is also a strong point with the Aria, as you'd expect of a big coupe-like family SUV like this. Those in the back get a flat floor and loads more legroom than you get in a Nissan Qashqai, for instance, Roughly the same amount, if not slightly more, than you get in a Ford Mustang Mach-E and Volkswagen ID4. As for the boot, front-wheel drive Aria versions get a really decent load space with 466 litre capacity. Four-wheel drive versions lose a little bit of that space and get 408 litres. Both have the split underfloor storage that's really useful for stowing your cables. But it is a shame that there's no storage in the nose of the car as you get with a Tesla Model Y. Charging is via the Type 2 and CCS sockets on the front wing of the car, with speeds up to 130 kilowatts, offering a 100 mile top up in around about 15 minutes. Plug into a 7 kilowatt home wall box and you'll have a full charge in around about 9 hours for the smaller battery car, or about 13 hours for the big battery. So, how does the Nissan Aria drive? Well, we have got a two wheel drive small battery version here. It's on 20 inch wheels, although interestingly, it does actually have quite chunky sidewalls. You've got 45 section tires. And it's really, it's pretty good, you know. I think it's got a really nice sort of confident, sure footed feel to it. Steering response is very nice in normal. So you've got your um, sport, normal and eco, which you shuffle through with your nice touch sensitive button down here. Stick it in sport and the steering gets a bit heavier. Um, it's fine, but I just think that uh, it's almost, it just feels a bit artificial. When you put it in sport mode, it reminds me a little bit of a sort of mini-esque, really keen turn into a corner, quite weighty, and uh, it's not bad. It balances up quite nicely in a fast corner. 
but I still prefer it in normal. I just think it feels a bit more natural and organic, really. And that's all well and good. So nice handling. I think it does bode well for the performance model. We'll have to see what that's like. It's quite a drastically different thing to this uh, this two-wheel drive small battery version. So we'll uh, look forward to that one for sure. Um, when it comes to ride comfort, I think that's where my only kind of fairly big concern is with the Aria because it's not bad. High-speed stuff is really quite nice and really nice control through, uh, you know, there's good compressions on this test track, um, really nice. But when you hit high frequency, uh, bumps in the road, the kind of stuff that you're going to find around town in the UK basically, it does feel quite brittle. Uh, I wonder whether the 19 inch wheels might make quite a big difference to that. So I'm going to reserve judgment until I've actually had a go in the Aria on a proper UK road and around town and stuff. But for now, it feels to me like the suspension's quite noisy and perhaps a little bit unsettled by those kind of high frequency, scruffy, you know, the sort of thing you get in UK towns where the tarmac's worn away a bit and you get that kind of sharp edge stuff that feels to me it could be a bit of an issue. So we'll see how it does on that one and we'll certainly get it up against its rivals uh, when we can get this car on the road, which hopefully won't be too long. Other than that, performance, absolutely fine. Feels really nippy away from standstill. It's not gonna blow your mind, you know, it's not gonna, <laughs> it's not got stratospheric performance. Even if you do go for the, um, for the top range E-Force performance Aria, when that comes out, that's got 0 to 62 of more like five seconds. So, you know, that's up there with the, with the faster mach es but you're not talking about Tesla performance here. Even so, absolutely fine for uh, your everyday stuff. More than fast enough for merging onto fast motorways, that kind of thing, no problem at all. Now, Nissan kind of pioneered the e-power thing, which is one pedal driving. Uh, the Leaf was one of the first to come to market with it. And what it means is that you can drive around town without using the actual brake pedal. Uh, because as you lift off the throttle, the regenerative braking, which you have in every EV, kicks in really strongly. So you can activate it down here. Um, and I have to say, they've improved it for the Aria over the Leaf, because sometimes, mostly at sort of parking, maneuvering speeds in the Leaf, if you've got it in e-power, it can feel a bit unpredictable. You get sort of slight changes in how the pedal responds. In the Aria, it seems to be quite a lot better. It's really nice and smooth and predictable. And if you turn e-pedal off, then you get standard quite mild regen which doesn't really feel much different to the standard kind of engine braking you get in a petrol or diesel car so this does feel like a very unintimidating very confident car if this were your first ev i don't think you'd be in any way kind of surprised by how it drives in fact it's really lovely and smooth and very intuitive generally i think um, so there you have it i think the aria is exactly what people are going to be wanting from this sort of semi-sporting family SUV crossover. It is a really nice package. It's got a really, like I said, it's just sure-footed and confident and nice and you can get in it and it instantly is actually very easy to drive. So that's all well and good. Um, it's also well equipped so you get your pro pilot semi-autonomous drive mode so your adaptive cruise, your lane keep and also traffic stop and go as standard on every Aria which is great uh, because I used to commute into London quite often and if you're in that kind of, you know, 20 mile an hour, really sticky traffic, that ability to stop when the car in front stops with you, stay in a lane, this kind of thing, actually does take a lot of the stress out of it. And I'm not a huge fan of semi-autonomous drive modes generally. I'll be completely honest about that. Um, I can see their purpose and I think they're getting better. But at the moment, I do think that sort of slow speed traffic stuff, that's where it really comes into, into play. So it's great that that's standard. If you go for the Navi upgrade, then it will also follow your speed limits and it will slow down if it knows that there's a sharp corner coming up and this kind of thing. So Nissan's doing really well for the amount of standard safety kit and driver aids. It's pretty much up there, I think, probably class leading. You also get a heat pump as standard, uh, which let's face it, doesn't sound exciting, but what it means is that the Aria will be fairly efficient in cold weather, more so than an EV that doesn't have a heat pump generally. You've also got water cooled battery, which means that the battery should rapid charge quite quickly and you should be able to rapid charge consecutively on a longer journey and it, and it shouldn't be a problem. So this is all good to know about the Aria. I mean, the thing is, Nissan is pretty much the godfather of the mainstream EV. It launched the Leaf, which started it all, and it's got more of a history and more experience with mainstream EVs than just about anybody else. The Nissan Leaf is still one of the biggest selling EVs in the world. And I think that experience does show in the Aria. It is genuinely a really nice, really likeable, and very effective package. We'll have to drive it in the UK a bit more before we can come to a final conclusion on whether that ride comfort 
is a bit of a problem, I fear it might be, and I also want to spend a lot more time in the car before I can give a proper real world range estimate according to our experience of the car. Judging by what Nissan says about the battery uh, WLTP range, well, I think you're going to be looking at about 150 to 200 for the smaller battery and more like 250 to 300 for the bigger battery, but that's very rough estimates. Again, we'll come back to all of that when we've driven it more um, on UK roads and back to back with its rivals. Speaking of which, one of the bigger problems that the Aria might face is the Skoda Enyaq IV, which does a very similar job for quite a bit less money, even if it's not as well equipped as standard as the Nissan. We'll have to get both on the road back to back to find out which one is best. In the meantime, head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the Cargurus UK YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos, including more videos to come on the Nissan Aria.